so after uh, going through tutorial number 2 we'll now look into a, a complex tutorial uh, tutorial number 3 uh, as we have already seen in the lecture slides that uh, it will be a complex geometry so i have already opened the uh, com the file of uh, this uh, geometry in uh, autocad so you can see that uh, i will explain one by one the white lines are the natural uh, geological stratum of different layer the topmost layer as i have mentioned is the overburden layer the middle layer is the uh, uh, fractured or weathered rock and the bottommost layer is the uh, intact rock or uh, jointed rock mass so uh, the top one uh, this blue line basically says that uh, our reinforcement should not go beyond this blue line so we have to put this marker up uh, in that case and uh, after that this red line uh, or the red section suggests that uh, this uh, red section will be covered by concrete uh, concrete walls rcc cladding wall uh, what i meant to say here because this will not be pure concrete uh, a wall which uh, will cover the slope uh, and uh, from falling it so there are different uh, material parameters which we can consider for concrete uh, generally we can consider for uh, consider a stiff material or uh, you can consider very high cohesive cohesion value for concrete so after that uh, you can see that this blue line will be the flattened surface of uh, that uh, a strip which is uh, being built after we cut this uh, this area of the rock so uh, being uh, careful uh, on that so in this slope what we will do is that first we have to calculate the unreinforced factor of safety of slope so for unreinforced factor of safety we will create uh, uh, will basically save it as a different name we'll save it uh, as a name called re unreinforced unreinforced and then we keep on editing it because we have a backup for this file uh, uh, I have saved it as a dwg format anyway later on we can change the format so let's just uh, remove this uh, blue lines uh, because we don't require them uh, lit and now because it's in an unreinforced case we will not be anyway requiring this so let's remove whatever we have got with us this blue line yeah so now we have the virgin slope with us uh, without any reinforcement without any cut section now what we will do is uh, we'll in case we'll see that if there are not any polygonal uh, section uh, so what we will do is here is that we will again run the command bo so bo or boundary command will basically uh, create polygonal section uh, out of island detection technique so first the rock mass uh, jointed rock mass and click on enter again type bo for the middle layer and uh, click on enter now the last layer again type bo select the boundary uh, go with the default and uh, click on the point which is citing inter, uh, in the internal section and click on enter now I guess we can save it again as a DXF format uh, so this is a DWG format we will again save it as DXF file and click on save so this is now saved now uh, for the unreinforced uh, uh, analysis we will go to geoslope and uh, we will again uh, go with the metric and 2D uh, dimension uh, to metric dimensions and 2D uh, geometry like that uh, we'll click on slope w analysis uh, so after clicking on it uh, we have morgenson's price uh, a half sign and pwb condition will be ru as we have mentioned in the uh, pore water pressure uh, sorry uh, powerpoint uh, uh, of this uh, tutorial for the stage pseudo static or earthquake analysis we'll use effective stress strength and uh, slip surface uh, uh, because this uh, drawing will be uh, a different one so left to right movement of slip surface will occur we'll use gradient radius method again you can use entry and exit but uh, in this case uh, where uh, the slopes are not flat at any time so we use gradient radius because this is most most general for complex slope uh, complex slopes so we'll call the name test uh, to unreinforce sorry unreinforce 
post so that's what we will be calling this now just close this and uh, go to file import we will import the unreinforced uh, dxf file clicking on open there is only one layer we'll again uh, go with the default setting and uh, situate it origin to origin clicking on ok so this is the uh, uh, geometry which we have imported and the origin as you can see is at the middle of the second layer you can situate the origin later on one more thing which you can do is you can just clicking on select click on select uh, all and uh, uh, you can just move selection by uh, what is the location of this point 1001 so in x direction you can just move them by 110 and move it like that so in that manner you can also uh, locate the origin uh, move the origin by this method uh, so it's slightly lower than the origin or actual 0 comma 0 coordinate anyway it doesn't matter much uh, because we have us uh, with us the height of the slope which is 116 meter uh, and the toe of the slope is uh, about 29 meter and the length is about uh, uh, 227 so you can see that 227 meter it's very big uh, uh, rock slope uh, almost uh, uh, you can see the top of the hilly slope so first what we will do is that uh, we'll go and uh, define the uh, materials so we have three materials with us so we'll click on add so the first layer will be the bottom rock so a bottom rock which we have seen earlier we'll use more column material parameters with uh, the properties of uh, this rock as 28 kilonewton per meter the cohesion will be 44 kilopascal and the phi will be 36 degrees so that's what the material properties which will be looking at uh, we can change the color for the bottom let's uh, change the color to blue and uh, create a new material add a material uh, we'll call this material middle rock so middle rock again will be a, a shear normal function which we have seen in the previous tutorial because we have shear normal points so we can go ahead and uh, uh, model them according to that but before that we have to create a, a constant unit weight of 24 which we have seen in the presentation so let's go ahead and uh, add a spline uh, data point uh, using this function we'll call it tau so instead of tau and sigma just call it uh, weathered because that's uh, what we are doing for weathered rock so 0 comma 0 add again uh, 117.6 so that it, it these are the values which i am getting from the power from presentation so you can also just uh, slide back and uh, check these values out if you ha don't recall them 235.2 149.234 if i have mistaken any values then you can just uh, uh, put the correct values uh, from the ppt however i guess uh, there are no mistakes uh, right now from my perspective so this final uh, tau and sigma point is added so our uh, material definition for uh, weathered rock is complete we'll just close it and uh, select the weathered rock for this one and uh, uh, we'll now define the top overburden soil clicking on add we'll call it top soil and we'll again select the uh, she shear normal function but the unit weight here will be a little lower 18 kilonewton per meter cube and we have weathered uh, a shear normal function now we'll create another function we'll add a new function we'll call it ob soil or overburden soil we'll use a shear normal data point uh, again will be 0 0 add and we know from the earlier uh, version uh, we have added the, these values again so what you can do is if you want to uh, re, uh, ch uh, use the same values you can just uh, add that uh, this geometry into the previous file so that's what you can do and 105.55 so we'll keep on adding all the points now the because we are not uh, uh, 
comparing it against the bilinear, so we will add the final point as well. In this case, 0 0.1, 139, 0 0.12. So I guess uh, all the points are added correctly. Now we will just uh, close this and select the OB soil here and close this hole. Uh, we will just we will just again go to the material properties and check the colors. Yeah, top soil and uh, middle soil, middle rock has very uh, similar colors. So, just uh, change the color pattern because we do not want to confuse ourselves uh, while assigning the materials. So, we have created the materials now. After creating the material, the main work, uh, main task of uh, our uh, is to uh, we draw the material. So, the bottom rock will be the bottom layer. Uh, the middle rock will be the middle layer and the top soil will be the top layer that is how we can just assign the material into the polygonal section. Now after this uh, uh, what we need to do is that we have to define sorry we have to define the seismic load. Seismic load uh, for right now we can just take 0 0.15 and uh, 0 0.1. So this uh, analysis will uh, assume this as the seismic parameter. Now, with the seismic parameter, we can go to pore water pressure parameter. For each of the layer, we will assume RU coefficient of 0.25 because that is the most conservative value, uh, most uh, limiting value, which will give you a conservative estimate on a factor of safety. So, however, you can calculate the RU value uh, or uh, uh, a basic pore water pressure. This is a pore water pressure ratio uh, based on uh, your geotechnical analysis of a uh, water table or saturation. So, I will not go much deeper into it. So, we have defined RE values. Now, what we will do is that we will again go to draw uh, slip surfaces and we will start to draw the grid first. So, because we see that our slip surface direction will be from uh, uh, right to left to right. So, we will again first check this that our slip surface direction is from left to right Yeah, and grid and radius. So, just to check them and now again let us go to draw and draw a grid. So, to draw a grid, we will start a grid like this, okay, sorry, uh, there was a mistake. Oh, so, uh, there was a mistake, I keep committing again. what we have to do is that grid must be defined by the first uh, upper left corner then lower left upper left then lower left okay sorry sorry for that uh, so you have to uh, uh, just check it so upper left corner then the lower left corner okay now this is the grid uh, which we can define like that uh, geoslope uh, basically takes uh, uh, this is strictly so that we define our grid uh, properly. So we will use 10 by 10 grid uh, on this uh, and we will just close it. Now we will draw the uh, radius. To draw the radius uh, we will just uh, select the whole section of the sketch by going from top to bottom and the weighted with a difference of 10 and uh, we will not rotate it but just want to see it. So, you can uh, increase the number of radius, uh, but for this kind of analysis it will be, it will take uh, some amount of time. So, maybe uh, for this uh, initial analysis we can just go ahead with it and uh, after this we can just save this analysis and uh, call it uh, uh, test to unreinforced, that is what I am going to call it right now. And uh, after that, uh, I guess we have defined all of the parameters uh, to be appropriate for the analysis to run. Now, we will start the analysis and check, uh, wait to check the results. So, the results are quite uh, fast as you can see here. And uh, you can see that slip surfaces, uh, very uh, small slip surfaces are also appearing in this uh, uh, parameter. So, one thing which you want to uh, do here is that you can filter out this uh, small uh, unreasonable failures uh, 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 anytime. So, to filter out this unreasonable failure which are covering almost the factor of safety about uh, of point, uh, yes, point 0.72, point 0.8 and higher, yeah, point after point 0.84. 
we can assume that uh, the slip surface is point after point 8 the slip surface has become uh, significant. So, uh, you can just uh, hover over it and you can see that depth of uh, overburden layer is uh, about 5 meter. You can just see the difference in coordinate y coordinate 29 to 25. So, about 5 to 4 meter deep uh, 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 5 to 4 meter uh, is the depth of uh, this uh, upper layer the green layer overburden layer. So, we do not want our failure to be half of that height. So, 2 meter or 3 meter failure can be covered and this much rock can be caught by any uh, uh, rock sliding uh, uh, rocks, uh, any uh, earthquake uh, sorry uh, earth sliding mitigation uh, me mechanism. But uh, larger failure like a deeper failure up to 4 meter depth should always be avoided. That is why uh, we have seen in the slide uh, the presentation slides that uh, we need to require uh, SDA reinforcement at the open surfaces of this overburden soil. So, for right now we will uh, uh, finish the unreinforced part here and you can see that uh, there are very unsignificant failure you need to just uh, check out the values un of unsignificant failure and uh, maybe you can also write an XML code in it, but we will not be covering that that is much complex uh, than the uh, this is that is much complex than uh, the general purview of uh, uh, slope stability analysis. So, I uh, will finish this part of tutorial uh, here and later on we will go to reinforce section analysis.